Hi, Terry Van Noy. Welcome to Math Class with Terry V. Hope this video helps you out, and if you enjoy it, please share it, comment, or like it. And you can also go to my website, mathpowerline.com. It's a math resource blog, uh, lesson videos for students, and other resources for parents and teachers. Give me a call, or go to my website or email. All right, let's go to today's lesson. All right, students, for this video, we are continuing on with solving equations. We've talked about single step and two step equations. Now we're going to get into some word problem applications where the idea is to interpret it correctly and be able to write an equation and solve. Now these will take probably about two steps. So here we go. I think it's a good idea to read the problem out loud and let's highlight some of the important information and figure out how to write an equation. Number nine, for a field trip, five students rode in cars and the rest filled seven buses. How many students were in each bus if 278 students were on the trip? All right, five students rode in cars. So we start with five students and then we're going to add in seven buses. Okay, now I'm going to say B stands for students in each bus. All right, we're going to assume that a bus fills the same number of students. Okay, so how many students were in each bus? That would be B. We have to choose a variable and remember what it stands for. So seven bus loads of students plus five additional students in cars gives you a total of 278. All right, so you'll recognize this as being a two-step equation. So we are first going to get rid of that 5 number, which is my free number. It's on the same side as the variable, and it is not attached like the 7 is. So start by subtracting 5 from each side. So 7b equals 273, and we will be able to divide that by 7 and get our answer. 39 students for each bus. Now the third step, of course, for all of these is check your answer. So 39 students in each bus. We do 39 times 7. There's 7 bus loads. And then we add 5, and yes, that should give us our 278. All right, let's look at number 10. Sum of three consecutive numbers is 172. Or sorry, one is 72. What's the smallest of these numbers? You'll see the word consecutive in a lot of word problems in math, and it's, there's kind of a little trick to it, and or at least a pattern that you should recognize. And a consecutive means numbers that are right in a row, like 4, 5, and 6, or 11, 12, and 13. And of course, the sum is we're going to be adding these up. So the first number plus the next number plus the next number is going to be a sum of... 72 that's the idea so how do we represent the first second and third numbers if they are consecutive well if the first number is x then the next number has got to be one more than that x plus one remember my example of four five and six if x is four then the next number has got to be five one more and the next one's got to be two more than our original number all right so you can put parentheses in here to make it a little easier to see. It's not a bad idea with these consecutive number problems, but basically that's the first number, that's the second number, that's the third number. Okay, 72 is what we have on the right. Now this is going to take more than two steps actually, but we're going to add up all of our like terms. So we've got three x's there, and we have a one and a two which adds up to three. So we've combined our like terms and now, officially, we can start. This is a two-step equation. Subtract 3 from each side. That's the free number. And we get 3x equals 69. And divide by 3 to get our final answer. So the smallest of these numbers, which is actually the x, what we're getting right now, is going to be 23. Okay, which means that my three numbers are going to be 23, 24, 25. And if I was to add those together, that would give me the sum of 72. And we should probably check that and test that. I'll let you do that on your own. Number 11. 
point, I certainly invite you to pause the video and try these on your own. It's better that you try them first before I explain them. Here we go. The sum again of three consecutive numbers is 60. And as you saw by the previous problem, that is definitely going to be um, x, x plus 1, x plus 2. So our first number plus the second number, I'm going to leave out the parentheses this time, and plus the third number is going to equal 60. Now remember what we got, it's the same thing here. We ended up adding all those x's and those constant terms and we get 3x plus 3 this time equals 60. So we're going to subtract 3 from each side, that's my free number and we are going to end up in the next step at 3x equals 57 and x is going to be 19. Okay, so the three numbers would be 19, 20, and 21. If you add those together, you'd get 60. Finally, to finish off our set of problems here, May was going to sell all of her stamp collection to buy a video game. After selling half of them, she changed her mind and she bought 16 more. How many did she start with if she now has 31? All right, if you focus on the last question there, how many did she start with if she now has 31? Well, we're talking about stamps, right? So I'm going to say S for the number of stamps she started with. So she starts with a certain number of stamps, and then let's go in order. She sold half of them. All right, well, we can divide that by 2, right? And we are going to add 16 more. She adds 16 more to her collection. So she starts with S stamps, sells half of them so we can divide that by 2 and then we add 16. The result would be the 31 she has left at the end. Well obviously we're going to subtract 16 here. That's my free number and we are going to get I'm going to have to squeeze this over here. S over 2 equals 15. Now how do you solve that? Well, s over 2 means s divided by 2. The opposite of division is multiplication. So we're going to multiply both sides by 2 and we are going to get s is 30. So now let's work through the steps backwards or score, uh, forward, excuse me, and double check. So if she starts with 30 stamps, she sells half of them, that would be 15. Then the 15 plus the 16 that she buys would equal 31. All right, it's always a good idea to apply these in word problems to be able to interpret them as we write equations. So the next video in this series is going to be more than two steps. We're going to look at combining like terms and some other things. So I hope you're looking for these video series. Go ahead and on my YouTube channel, do a search for that title, How to Solve Equations. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video. All right, there you have it. I invite you to go to my website now, mathpowerline.com, or email me or give me a call. The way I work best with students is live online in my classroom. So if I can help you in any way, answer some specific questions, the first lesson with me is free as I show you how everything works. All right, study hard.